Good morning. Uh, can we start? Yeah. Uh, I am uh, Professor Dinesh Sharma. I am in uh, SGM School of Management in IIT Bombay. I teach marketing. Uh, it's great to be here with you. I will be discussing some of the key concepts of marketing uh, with mo uh, most of you might be knowing some concepts, but it might refresh in your minds or we can discuss uh, the implications and further we can discuss the implications of these concepts. Now before I start, I like to understand what marketing issues you face in your business. Uh, so uh, that will help me in uh, pinpointing certain concepts, <coughs> focusing on more, uh, more on some concepts and just not discussing some others. So can some of you uh, start with what issues you might face uh, in your businesses? I will just write down and compile all these issues and then it will help me in uh, focusing on few concepts. Yeah, yeah. prospecting. Okay, visibility of product service, understanding the customer requirements. Demand estimation. Uh, my words which I learned for like you know Coke, Pepsi. Okay, okay. Company. great. How do I put it to myself? Great, great, great. It's, it's a small company. How to uh, understand the legal terms and condition for marketing or whatever legal issues that we'll be facing when we market the product. Finding market for your products. Approaching the market. Uh, yeah. marketing of new products which may be similar yeah. in existing market customer education basically what i would like to know is how to understand a fragmented market so uh, if i understand you want to estimate the demand in a fragment market in a fragmented market yeah. and how do you market in that basically exactly what do you mean by fragment market fragmented i mean when there are lot lot many small players involved none of and uh, no recognized or li very little or less recognized brands involved in there. Mm. Marketing plan. Basically. Positioning for a new product to be launched into the market. How, how much to uh, spend it? Yeah, how much to spend? Okay. Where to spend? When you're doing a B2B marketing, how do you? Pick how to grow existing product in existing market or new product in existing market? Good. Uh, I'll try to focus on few. Uh, I may not focus on few, but I t I'll uh, try to find some solution for it. I'll just start with some of the basics. Uh, what do you understand by marketing and what are the basic concepts in marketing? <coughs> we'll come back to these issues uh, after a session and see how many issues could be solved by what we have. I'll start with the uh, what are the core concepts in marketing and uh, I will focus on the concept of customer value. What do you understand by marketing? Is it same as selling or advertisement or promotion? Any ideas on this? What is marketing? Process of selling your products. Understanding the requirements of the customer and proposing a solution which adds value to the customer's point and creates wealth in return to yourself. Yeah, uh, operationally. Uh, these are all the uh, functions of a marketing department or marketing function what you say. I will just focus on the process of marketing. Marketing uh, is a function in an organization. Marketing is a process, yes, very true. Marketing is also an orientation which I will focus on here or mindset. 
I will start with the definition of marketing which you might have read. This is very recent definition by American Marketing Association. Uh, it, it does not help much in solving your problem, but it is just a good starting point actually. Marketing is an organizational function and a set of process for creating, communicating and delivering value to the customers. It is not talking of products or services and for managing the customer relationships in a way that benefit the organization and stakeholders. So, it encompasses, it is a social process, uh, it is an exchange process wherein you create, communicate and deliver value. Value is the abstract form of the tangible products or services you deliver. So, what can be marketing is of anything of value to the customers. It can be a product, good, tangible good, service, idea, experience, it can be a person, it can be a place, anything, because anything of some value. Marketing orientation or marketing concept is one of the concepts with which a firm works. There are many other concepts. One of the very, uh, you know, old concept is a production concept. There is a story of uh, Ford Motors. You know the story of Ford Motors? Ford was, uh, you know, uh, first time the assembly line started with the Ford Motors. And the owner said that I want to make car as long as it is black. He wanted everybody to have a car. His concept was a production concept. Make things cheap, widely available so that everybody can buy it focus on your production efficiencies. Mindset is produce cheap, not poor quality, but decent quality, affordable, widely available, high volume, typical assembly line concept. The one of the concept with which any business works assumes that consumers favor those products which are widely available and low cost. Second concept is product concept, which assumes the consumer will favor the product that offer most quality, best quality products, performance and features. There are many firms which work on this concept and sell uh, products based upon this. They try to give innovative features, best quality. This is the predominant concept with which any business works, selling concept. A concept which assumes that customer will not buy unless you pushed up your product to it. Organization has to stimulate and substantiate the effort for the purchase. So, whatever you produce, you have to sell that and it is a prerogative of your marketing department or sales department to sell the product. So, you, have, you can promote, you can advertise, but sell the product. Traditionally, uh, all the insurance products promoted by the LIC were with this concept only. Uh, not MBA products, but insurance products or not only insurance products, I mean many products you know. In India almost everything was with the sales concept earlier. So, whatever you produce, you push and sell many things. You forget rationed products and others, but typically insurance policies, they thought that agent has to push their policies to sell. So, unless you uh, convince a customer that uh, you have to buy this, so nobody will buy insurance policy. Things have changed, we will discuss how. Then fourth is marketing concept, which says you focus on the needs and wants of the target customer and make profit. Del uh, deliver the desired satisfactions effectively and efficiently than competitors. They focus on needs and wants. It is not that uh, marketers do not produce efficiently, marketers do not have a sales force or marketers do not focus on product quality, but the actual focus is somewhere else, uh, probably needs and wants of the target consumer, customer. Can we differentiate between all these concepts? Is it easy to differentiate? It is not uh, that you do not produce, again I repeat you produce efficiently low cost cheap products, you may, you may produce products with highest quality, 
you may have a very efficient sales force, but where is the focus? Focus is on needs and wants of the target consumer. Can I say it is up to the main concept, fund up man, man, M A N, money, authority, and needs. You can paraphrase in many words. That is the, up to you. It is. How do you say authority? What is the? The person who needs the product only. Okay, simpler way is to see needs and wants of the customer, and you sell to the product. so uh, you don't focus on just cheaper products just highest quality products you see what are the wants of the can you differentiate between need and a want if i don't have a cloth it is in my need if i want to purchase a whirlpool washing machine it is i want to purchase okay any anything else general need any anyway i have to purchase the cloth if i don't have Okay. If, uh, if, uh, if I want to purchase a whirlpool washing machine, it is it is my want. If I have the money, I will purchase. If I don't have the money, I will not purchase. It is my just a G deals that I need. That need need is a customer requirement. Customer want requirement. Want is a desire of customers. Like need is food. Uh, want is class. want is idli or or McDonald's. Okay. Uh, yeah we can actually discuss uh, at length on this but i'll cut short because many of you know this needs see these words are very common words and very frequently used and uh, subject to many interpretations in marketing we say is needs are very basic to any human being and every customer has similar needs but wants are specific to certain segments needs can be need for security uh want can be something else but this individual requirements are needs are nothing but needs are basic to every human being and they are common yes sir but wants are desires wants are specific to certain segments of the customers for example simple is uh, you are hungry yes sir food. and you need food but want is you need a particular type of food that is a, at very basic level the idea is to identify what is the need of the customer why we dis- want will vary from customer to customer the problem is we focus on only wants and not on need what need uh, cosmetics satisfy for women what is the need for cosmetics looking good looking good seeking appreciation what else security assertion influencing the environment influencing the environment controlling so if you can filter down you know uh, somebody asks revlon what need you satisfy what do you what do you sell they said that we sell hope that's all we don't sell uh, cosmetics we sell hope so hope summarizes everything sometimes just filter down to the lowest form of need of a customer like washing machine you want what purpose washing machine serves cleans the clothes no why why you want this this go back to the basics you want what hygiene again why you want hygiene you want security so probably need for security for something is your basic need but you want a washing machine for that so you climb a ladder of needs and wants with so when you sell a product just find out which category of need it falls into and which category of wants it falls into then you will understand who are the competitors of the product because competition comes in a similar want and need category for example uh, you want there is a need for security there is a need for financial security first level is security second is financial security what you want for that some people will like to invest in stock market some people will like to invest in fds some people will like to invest real estate in real estate some people will like to invest but what is the basic need basic need is security and financial security so mutual funds have a competition with so many products 
So we have to see, we have to filter down to the basic need and want category and that makes our mind clear of what market we are serving. Need and want defines the market. It's very easy to discuss. And like he said, uh, it's very easy to discuss and conceptualize and you know even uh, derive fun in discussing the big marketing products, but it, it is easy to understand also. Like Coca-Cola and Pepsi, they are the competitors. Which need category they satisfy? Which want category they satisfy? So Coca-Cola drinks satisfy which need and want? Thirsty. Thirst? You agree? Yeah, I don't agree with this. Coca-Cola satisfy which market? Which need? Which want? Thirst? Spike status, being in vogue kind of thing. Not just the first. I think the perce perception could be different based on which market you are addressing on this. Yeah, yeah. See, that is what I am asking, you know. How, how do you define the market for a Coca-Cola? The segment says... Is a beverage market? So, there is a lot of confusion in this and clarity, uh, people lack clarity in this. this. They are in every market actually. At one level, they are competing with Pepsi for carbonated drink market. Some people say, when say Coca-Cola say I have 50 percent market share. So which market he is referring to? Carbonated drink market. But like he said, he is a beverage market. When I talk of beverage market, who are the competitors? Then you are talking of thirst as a need and then the competitors are probably Nimbu Pani and Lassi and others also. But how do Coca-Cola sees themselves as operating in the market? They say we serve a fun drink market, it is not thirst. So when I say they are satisfying the need for fun, it is they are going out of the realm of the thirst need. So it is a fun drink. So your assessment of need for co want for Coca-Cola is different. So in this way, just think what need and want category your product is satisfying or you want it to satisfy? I have a product, the only differentiating uh, <coughs> factor or uh, perhaps the more alternate product, any other thing in the market is its ease of use. Okay. It's a differentiator, I know that's a differentiator. But how would it, uh, when I'm looking at wants and needs, am I satisfying the need of the customer to actually do it easily? Yeah. Easily doing, is it a need or is it not a need? I just want that clarity. Why not? Doing, doing it easily, doing it efficiently. Yeah. Again, see why, why efficiently? Why easily? What need it satisfy? No. Just again ask why. Just ask why and what well. Then you understand whether he will buy this product for that need or not. Coca Cola is not only serving. See, of course, thirst is there. There is no doubt about it. But beyond thirst, the need is some fun and that is a predominant need. A want or twat one time turned into a need for Coca-Cola and Pepsis in the developed markets or even in the Indian market in the last 10 years, I would say. I will not say. Again, I will see. It's all, play, it's all play of words. Let us not play with words. I will say needs are very basic to human beings or business. When I say human being, I also mean business which you run in. For example, industrial, what is the need of an office? Become more efficient, paperless. So these are the need. Now again ask why. So let us, rather than, you can say that, but I will say, let's filter down to the, need is very basic. I, I think there is some confusion when you said the word basic. Uh, in the Maslow's hierarchy, the food, shelter and clothing is basic. And there are other basic needs also, like show social security, and social need. need. Yeah, the okay. whole hierarchy, all our needs, even self-actualization is a need. So we can have create products in any of these uh, levels of yeah. needs. The problem, uh, you know, why we face problem? We face problem where to, when we, uh, you know, uh, categorize the product in a different need category, and think then then you know. The question comes, why it is not selling? Because we are selling to a different market actually. We are not 
trying to address the need it actually serves. So asking question why, so I am going other way round, so let us go other way round. One way is find the need and make a product, the other way round is what need category or want category this existing product is serving, it, it can be both ways from product to need, from need to product, you can do go both ways and just try to see which product is serving or what your product is serving which need of the customer and are you able to communicate that, are you able to communicate that and a person will only buy if that product solves that need or want and add some value to its uh, solution, add some value. If I am thirsty, if some water quenches or some carbonated water quenches my thirst, some value it adds to my basic needs. So marketing stresses on understanding the needs and wants again not for everybody but target customer. We will we'll see what is what, what I mean by target customer. There is a process of identifying a target customer. So uh, you can go both ways need to a product or product to need and try to identify what is the laddering, what is the ladder. Asking question why, why, why will lead to the basic needs category. Is video conferencing a competitor to aircraft industry? There are two different product categories. But video conferencing is proving to be a biggest threat to aircraft industry. So, because they are they are addressing similar needs of the customer. The need category is similar. Product categories might be different. So, so you have to filter down. The first thing, so marketer does this. That is why they stress on need and wants of the customer. X software competing with Y application. Do micro word compete with typewriters just think so it is ultimate so from software you for example many of your software uh, in software industry so what need and want of your customer it actually satisfies yes a business to business it might be a solution then is that solution valuable for example a customer will prefer a solution as valuable if it makes his operations more efficient with a lower investment plus quality plus reliability plus servicing x y z. So is it actually adding some value to its needs and wants to wants not needs needs are there he has needs. So there are needs of human beings there are needs for biz of businesses. So filtering down to very basic level asking question why 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 and if you stop somewhere it means you have reached the ultimate. So it makes, for example, you ask your software makes a business efficient, do not stop, why efficient, how, then again go, so any, you will reach to the basic, then you can build on ladder on and that gives you ideas for promotion, pricing and everything. So marketers make product cheap, marketer make product widely available, but the focus is different. So all these concepts, production, product, selling and marketing, marketing focuses on needs and wants and values. Uh, when a product or an organization goes to uh, a business, uh, business, can we say that it is passing through all these concepts starting with maybe a marketing <coughs> concept, developing it on a product, a superior product, then uh, pushing it to like reduce prices over a period of time, moving into the production and then whatever you have produced you are getting into selling. Is it, is it possible that in an organization you have products at different uh, uh, platforms or uh, running with a different uh, premises at the same time? Uh, yes, it is possible and there are many companies who are working on different concepts. May, does an organization has to dedicate itself to a concept or it, it keeps moving uh, through the uh, different concepts uh, depending on the life cycle of the product and life cycle of the organization as well? See, uh, no. Just uh, <clears throat> these concepts already exist in your mind. It's a, these are mindsets. It is not. I'm not. I'm again repeat. I am not saying you don't sell. You don't sell your product. You don't push for your some of your, range of your products for selling. I'm not saying you don't produce cheap, or you don't work on the quality and features. 
of some products you can but the major focus is need and want you do all these things these are just concepts this is not a transitionary thing that the organization moves into but it's a mindset that it will lead the direction yes yes finally it will lead for example if you are with production concept your main focus we only on production like ford for example ford motors for years they kept on making only black car the model t car and it was wildly successful they made lot of money but what happened finally what happened to maruti 800 finally came general motors who produce cars of different sizes different power different colors and they overtook the ford it is not that uh, general motor did not focus on a good quality did not focus on producing cheap or did not focus on but they focus on they they thought they you know focus on needs and want not everybody wants a black car not everybody wants a car of same horsepower people have different application and people want cars for different application so general motors was more of marketing concept they they saw that there are many segments of customers which do not want the existing car uh, would these be concepts as a mindset would those be, uh, these be like 24 carat marketing concept or 24 carat like 100% selling concept or would it be a blend of it depending on the style of working it is predominant it can never be 20 uh, total it is predominant for example for one range of product you think you 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 have made a product like again needs can be latent right for example you think the, the existing set of customers have this need but you have to they are latent so you probably focus on pushing your sales person highlighting that need to him yoka forbes sold so many uh, vacuum cleaners you know have you seen the process of selling direct marketing yes. they they will come to your home and they will sell the product how they will sell for, for vacuum cleaner the typical process was they will go to a home ask for a dirty carpet they clean the carpet they will show the dust they will again pour the dust on the carpet and then clean again then the owner will say oh, what are you doing and they will again clean they, they will show that this is the dirt i am again throwing in the carpet and then again clean the carpet and that was such a great impact on the customer he will buy so lead was latent a uh, latent actually so yoka forbes used more of a selling uh, concept but the, they knew that there is a need for hygiene or need for cleanliness of customer but it's not so apparent focus was marketing used tool they used was selling when it's a latent need uh, you took a right example in terms of eureka forbes uh, for companies uh, to identify latent needs a demo of a product the experience after the demo is that a good approach always because it's a demo of the product you like a forbes which actually showed yes. the customer the value yes. after that he's buying it for to identify a latent need is that a very good method yeah why or not? that's the only method is there any other alternate see uh, this is one of the very powerful method you know demonstrate demonstrate the product and demonstrating how will it satisfy your need and want for them it's very powerful thing in b2b context no why your demonstration last demonstration failed you cannot relate to that always because there can be so many other factors there is a difference between individual buying behavior and a industrial buying behavior because there are inf- lot of influencers in industrial buying behavior and individual buying behavior the decision maker is one or two so there are other factors also but demonstrating is one of the powerful way of making a customer understand yes this product will satisfy your need and this is the way it will satisfy if yeah. there are as you said in a in a b2b scenario where there are multiple people who are making decisions would you recommend actually doing demonstrations for everybody because that will not actually happen when you are actually doing a product demo see there are no easy answers ideally yes but if one demonstration doesn't help you have to go to individuals and again in that scenario you have to find out who is the most powerful what is the hierarchy understanding the dynamics of the organization and see who is the decision maker who is the influence who is the gatekeeper with the process and then uh, try to see uh, try see sometimes the user is different from the decision maker decision consultant is different from the purchaser so there are four five typical and there is a gatekeeper 
gatekeeper means who will say no 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 so the four five key pe people user in some organization user is more powerful in some organization the purchase person is more powerful in some organization the consultant is more powerful so understanding the dynamics of the organization uh, will help actually because it will vary from organization to organization so i am i am now focusing on only value because i i see any product or any service as a bundle of values only this is the abstraction of a tangible product and i am sure if you use this abstraction it will help it has helped there are many tools available in understanding the value of a tangible product and service and which has helped organizations in improving the service what is customer value worth utility benefit just think what what do you mean by value value of any product or this is how you explain what is the worth utility benefit sometimes you say a price represents the value of a product what actually value of a product means esteem which fulfills the need need but how do you, see while making a decision that this product is more valuable than the other what is the underlying criteria usefulness satisfaction satisfaction is it see again satisfaction comes after you use basically not before you use but when are you making a purchase decision what are the underlying criteria you have for any product beneficial is it beneficial to you is it only benefit okay in other words the value Good benefit call. that you get for unit yes, price service durability point of view service point of view cost point of view or customer satisfaction i'll i'll just <laughs> simplify this yes you are right all right i'll say value is not only benefit it is a relation between benefit and the cost <coughs> value is never single dimensional when i talk of benefits when you talk of benefits it means you are talking of single dimension and benefit is again a different term from features so when value just see your product as a bundle of a value it gives something to customer and you get something out of it from customer so customer sacrifices something for some benefit and customer always always will compare the value of the competing products and if he thinks he gets more value from this product he will purchase that take any example and you can you know come to this conclusion it is never benefit only it is never price only it is a relationship between benefit and price or cost and benefits can be functional it can be emotional it can be social why you want to acquire uh, uh, why you want a car what is the need for a car social transportation prestige um, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. so car satisfies more than one needs one is basic transportation another one is social and second is your prestige so there is some benefit what is the cost now you understand cost is not the price paid it is the effort and time also so i we call it a customer perceived value i am using the word perceive now perceived benefits or quality divided by the sacrifices sacrifices the cost or the price time and effort now think of any product and see what are the benefits you derive and what is the sacrifice you make and have you ever bought a product without this process tell me think of any product as a consumer have you analyzed this might be a process in your subconscious but just be conscious of this process uh, have you ever as a consumer be industrial consumer be household consumer have you ever done that just give me a single example that you never did that just think over it even if, when you go and buy a product like salt i can explicate that process of buying this value valuation of products might vary
from product to product the intensity of valuation there are some product like car your sofa set which are high involvement products and there can be products like salt or any other product which are low involvement product but the process of valuation is same intensity of involvement might be high or low you agree any disagreements i don't know if it's a disagreement uh, let's say benefits are there you know we have cost per and perceived benefit and perceived cost uh, i go to a customer i he's already having my one of my competing products and it is costing lesser than uh, what i'm proposing to him he's already benefiting and his cost is also less i go to him i talk to him i'll show him the benefits and the cost uh, right now the, as you said you know in, if i buy a mercedes i have a certain advantage like i have a prestige class i have this and i have that and there are certain eight nine needs which are being fulfilled versus an accent accent fulfills only four of the needs the cost factor is totally different you know the cost factor doesn't even apply there i mean in terms of uh, final value the customer is getting if i put the cost value i mean if it's benefits minus just cost or whatever you said will it uh, i mean benefits already includes cost isn't it like you know when i'm talking about the needs if the needs are the va- uh, benefits is getting it the features is getting that's already included in that yeah how would you differentiate the cost and the benefit there you know there is they are like already merged inside each other so, so the um, process i am asking you to follow is just to thread bear that actually now i I'll, i'll again introduce a term when i say need want i'll introduce a term demand <coughs> is there a relation between need want and demand you need transportation you need something which improves your esteem value in a society and you need a mercedes or you want a mercedes for to satisfy those needs should a mercedes manufacturer think that you are the prospective customer do you form the demand set there is another condition everybody has a need and a want but if a customer has willingness to pay and ability to pay that form the demand set so somebody asks how do i estimate demand demand set is want plus ability and willingness to pay everybody needs something few people want something and very few people have ability to pay and willingness to pay so the demand set is much smaller than the generic need and want level when we say willingness to pay isn't it a want because we are adding want <laughs> we are saying ability and willingness to pay is willingness to pay is equal to want that uh, sometimes sometimes may not for example two of you have same level of uh, wealth or money in, in your pocket but because of your culture because of your value system because of your you know the area you have brought in you may not willing to purchase that you may not be willing to purchase that you have money but you will not be willing to purchase that so proceed so so demand is very small subset of need and want and this is the process which is followed in every purchase decision by every human being be it individual purchase process or organizational purchase process conscious or subconscious it is never benefit alone it is never sacrifice alone now what i do uh, if i know this so marketer can enhance the value of its product and services by any of these means raising benefits compared to your competitor when i say raising benefits it is compared to your competitor reduce cost you will increase value raising benefits while lowering cost raising benefits by more than increase in cost lowering benefits by less than reduction in cost all these actions will increase value and i assume that you are doing thing and you are communicating also that is a different problem one is you do this with your product and services second thing is you communicate to customer that i have done this this is more valuable to you so knowing this you can play with the 
in so ultimately if you give see the base the theory is if you give more value to customer compared to competitor he will buy your product simple now I ask what is value benefit by cost now what are the benefits what is the cost at a third beer sometimes it is assumed that like he says the cost is already built in your benefits if it is built in just see what are the benefits again just throw these uh, things out 